And we are live. Awesome. And welcome to episode 77 of TLC Tech Learn Coffee. I am your host, Lisa Nowakowski, and I'm a fifth grade teacher in South Monterey County here in California. And I'm Nancy Minicozzi, also in California, Los Angeles County, and I am an instructional technology coach. Just a reminder that we have a 15-minute format because ain't nobody got time for more than that, especially at the end of the year. Oh, goodness gracious, no, we don't. Um, so we always have a fun coffee fact. And so I have combined, or somebody else has kind of, I actually didn't do it. Wine coffee is a thing. How awesome is that? So Forbes reported out that a Napa-based uh, Molinari Cafe um, has quietly released a line of wine-infused coffee. I'm not certain it's a great thing to take to school with you in the morning, but it's just a thing. Um, tonight's guest is going to be Becky Shorey. I hope I said your name properly. Um, and she will be talking to us about uh, student-led Chromebook repair teams. So Becky, go ahead, tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are and what you do. Uh, I just got a new job a few weeks ago, uh, working up at the administrative offices. I'm now the manager of strategic projects, which is launching a one-to-one -one Chromebook initiative in the fall for a district of 86,000. Uh, before that, I taught earth science, uh, environmental science and astronomy for uh, 16 years at Green Mountain High School. And then I became the ed tech coach over there before heading up to the district. Wow. Well, congratulations on the new position. Exciting. 86,000 students. That's, wow, that's really big. <laughs> a big job. Yeah. I have a lot of people helping. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to talk to us about um, student-led uh, Chromebook um, repair teams. So what grade level or uh, range do you use, do you use, use this to, um, to target? for this? Um, in our district, we've been doing it just straight up high school, um, but I do feel that this could go down into the middle grades as well. Absolutely. How exciting and empowering for students. So I'm really curious, how did this all get started? Uh, it came out of complete desperation. So um, we had just launched a one-to-one -one initiative at the school I was at at Green Mountain, um, and I was a huge part of doing that. And uh, repairs were taking uh, like two months or more uh, to come back, even for just a broken screen. And I was like, we can't be out of devices that long. These kids need them. And so I mentioned it to a student, Caleb, and he's like, oh, well, we can fix that. And I was like, well, I don't know how to do that. He's like, oh, I'll teach you. It'll be fine. I'm like, okay, that'd be great. And so then um, I took a class with EdTech team. They, they launch uh, one, and it kind of walks you through a lot of the processes um, and gets you thinking about how you're going to get kids on the team and stuff like that. And so between Caleb's help and uh, me taking that course, I just ran with it. Oh, that is fantastic. I love when teachers just go ahead and take the initiative and do insanely crazy things because that's where all of these wonderful things happen. Um, how long did you have the devices before you started that? And did you, you, did you answer that already? Yeah, you know, it was, I started uh, the, we did one-to-one one -one in the fall. And then by January of that year, I felt like I could have my head above water enough to start something new, uh, which was the repair team. So it was really within a few months. That, wow, that was really quick then for you. Yeah, uh, that's kind of how I roll. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, no time to like sit and think about it and, you know, nope. yeah, you just, you do no, it. No moss growing <laughs> here. Yeah. So um, how have the teachers and the students responded to all of this? You know, at first the students or the teachers really had no idea what was going on. It, it took a little while, uh, but uh, they, they finally caught on to the fact that, hey, kids aren't gone without devices for a while. Um, but as far as the kids on my team, I now have, uh, there's now a team of three. And that seemed to be working really, really well for uh, support for our two grades that are now one-to-one -one plus the, the middle school down the street. Um, so I'll probably need a couple more here next year or two. Uh, but there's this one kid, Kyle, like he struggles in a lot of normal academia. Uh, he loves this. He totally thrives. 
And uh, there's been a couple of times I've been like, dude, go home. Like, I really want to go home. I know that you're not done with that yet, but uh, you know, we can pick this up tomorrow. It will be fine. <laughs> so uh, they're pretty excited about it for sure. Um, but other teachers in other schools have uh, gotten wind of it. And uh, there was actually a woman up in Arvada West that started it even before I did. And so we have eight crews that are coming on board um, by the start of next school year. There's a couple that have already been started now, but that's pretty exciting. Oh, that is exciting. And I love when students can find the successes in certain places that they might not otherwise find. That's always nice. Um, so what other successes have you had, um, you know, with the students? I mean, and clearly they're, they're, you know, putting those Chromebooks back into the classrooms, which is fantastic. <clears throat> yeah, well, uh, like I said before, it was taking a few months to get uh, repairs done by sending them out. And if we have parts in stock, repairs are one to two days. So I think that that's a pretty huge success and a lot of it is just the efficiency of the students uh, and their tenacity to figure out what's going wrong. And some of the times, I mean, it takes a while, a, a lot of problem solving throughout to be able to figure out exactly um, what it is that's wrong. So it's been really nice to watch them grow over time. Um, with their problem solving skills. So I'd say that's been a huge success. Uh, and it's not just them that's learning, it's me, because I mean, at the start of this, I was like, how do you open this? Like, <laughs> what's a daughter board? I have no idea. Um, but some of the other successes is starting next year, we're gonna get all of the kids uh, Lenovo certified and A plus certifications. So they're gonna have the skills and the certifications that they can go out and get jobs. In fact, uh, I've gotten some of them, I got Abel a job this summer with the distributor who is going to be distributing all of said Chromebooks to the district next year. And he's going to be starting at the ground working with them in the field. So I consider that a pretty huge success. Wow, those are amazing stories. That is uh that is so great for those kids and well for you too because you know <laughs> you get to brag about them well and they're like thanks so much for getting me a job i'm like thanks for teaching me everything i know <laughs> <laughs> and do the students um get class credit for being on this team or is participation its own reward well it started off because <laughs> everything morphs over time it started off as um just a, a teacher's assistant credit then we changed that over to like a computer science kind of credit. It was more than a TA credit, but not really a class credit. And then as soon as they get into this IT essentials class where they get the A plus certification, it's going to be a straight up class with regular credits like everything else. Wow, that is fantastic. Yeah. You know, I'm excited. So um, we've talked about the successes and how great it's been for um, your students and for the teachers as well. Um, but as with anything, there have been some struggles along the way, I'm sure. Can you share uh, some of those struggles that you've had? Yeah, parts supply has been huge. Where do you get them for a reasonable price? And remember, I didn't know what I was doing. So ordering parts can sometimes be uh, tricky. And I've had to return a couple and some, yeah. Uh, so narrowing that down uh, has been a little bit of a struggle. And I would say across the board, having the students, um, they like to repair them, but there's a huge piece with taking quality notes so that somebody can come in behind you and actually uh, pick up where you left off or they know what problems have been, you know, what steps have been taken to solve it. And that's not the fun part of the job, but it's a real life skill for sure. Yeah, and once those students leave to have somebody else, you know, that same problem come back to be able to reflect on those notes as well. Um, that is really hard, I'm sure, you know, nobody likes yeah, to I, do that. I didn't things. see that one coming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we, have, so, we have that issue too um, with our student. We have some student teams they're a little bit different than the way yours are set up but repair notes are definitely an issue 
Yeah, so we're trying to come up with like some prompts because everything goes into a spreadsheet. Well, it starts off as a Google form and we're trying to modify that for next school year that kind of prompts them like, what, what did you try? And you know, what did you test? And then, you know, um, also having somebody come behind and be quality control so that they put their stamp of approval on it so that everything's been tested and we know that it's ready to go and some sort of vetting process for the student to get into that, uh, you know, to be in that position. So we're thinking it's going to be a really big uh, accomplishment for the student because not everybody gets to be quality control. And like you said, everything just starts to morph over time. Um, so what advice would you have to give someone who is thinking of starting up their own cyber crew? I think a lot of people um, don't want to do something until they've researched and they're ready to go. And I just, my motto in life has just been taking a leap of faith. I see a need and I'm like, I'm just going to do this. I have no idea how it's going to work out, but we'll figure it out as we go. And, you know, you don't want to be paralyzed by that, that indecision or the fact that you're not quite ready for it. I say, just jump in, try it. I mean, I started with a screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was my tool list. And then I was like, Oh, Hey, guitar picks work really well for wedging into the side by a screen to get the bezel off. So then I rated my husband's guitar pick. Uh, stash. He probably wonders where they all went. Uh, yeah. And then there I was like, knows. oh, hey, hey, they make tools for that. It's like actually a thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, morphed over time. And then when we fried something because of an electrical spark, I was like, oh, they make a thing for, you know, grounding you while you're working. So it's... <laughs> <laughs> And I love the risk-taking, um, adventurous side that you have. That's what a great role model and example for the other students to just to go for it and not worry about, well, worry a little bit about frying yourself, but no, not worry about, you know, having it done perfectly and, and you know, being the expert. Yeah, um, there's a couple of times where they've messed up and they're like, I can tell they're a little worried about my reaction. I'm like... Ah, that was a $20 lesson. That was super cheap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome attitude. <laughs> yeah. um, awesome. We're just about almost um, out of time, but I noticed that you do have resources that we're, we will share out on our website as well and in the speaker no or in the show notes. Um, so we'll definitely have those available for our listeners. Um, is there anything else that you would like to add about like this amazing journey that you're on? Uh, no, I just uh, kind of hang on <laughs> to your life and, uh, and see where it takes me. And, um, you know, it's, it's in part because of this attitude that, that got me this new job. So you just never know where the spirit's going to take you and the adventure. Oh, that's so wonderful. Um, so thank you so much, Becky, for being here and sharing your your story and your journey with us and all of your risk-taking um, craziness, uh, guitar picks to pull things apart. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we would also like to thank um, our listeners for listening. And if you enjoyed the show, please feel free to leave us a comment and let us know. And tonight's comment question is, could this idea work for your school or your district? Um, or do you already have something like this um, going on in your district? And we'd love to hear that story as well and you know, share notes and help one another out. Um, we invite you to join us on Wednesday, June 3rd, when our special guest will be, well, special guest, yes, will be um, Colleen Fried, and she'll be talking about circuitry. So excited about that. Yeah, I can't wait for that one. Please don't forget to subscribe to hear more about easy ways for you to innovate in your classroom. If you like the show, please rate and leave a review on iTunes because that helps people find us. Remember, we are always looking for guests to share the great things they are doing in their classrooms. So if you know someone who fits the bill or if you'd like to be a guest yourself, please visit tlc.ninja and complete the contact form to let us know. Thank you so much.